Hello, and welcome to Advanced Topics in Quantum Information Theory. My name is John Watrous. I'm a professor in the School of Computer Science and a faculty member of the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo. In this video, I will discuss the required background knowledge for this course, and then give a high-level overview of some of the topics that it will include. I will also say a little bit more about the logistics of the course, including the format through which it will be delivered, and the grading scheme for those of you registered in the course. This course is intended to be a follow-up course to another graduate course that I teach called Theory of Quantum Information, which is numbered CS766 or alternatively QIC820. I will assume that you have familiarity with the contents of that course, which includes the following topics. First is the general formulation of quantum information as described by density operators, quantum channels, and general measurements. In a mathematical sense, these are the building blocks of quantum information, and it is essential for this course that you have a good understanding of this formalism. I will also assume that you're familiar with the various ways we measure distance and similarity between quantum states, measurements, and channels, including various norms such as the trace norm, the spectral norm, and the completely bounded trace norm, which is also commonly called the diamond norm, as well as the fidelity function. I will assume that you're familiar with the basics of quantum Shannon theory, including von Neumann entropy, quantum relative entropy, quantum source coding, and related notions. Furthermore, I will assume that you're familiar with separability and entanglement in bipartite quantum systems, and that you have some familiarity with the phenomenon of non-locality and the so-called LOCC or local operations and classical communication paradigm. Finally, you should have a basic familiarity with semi-definite programming and let us say some exposure to unitarily invariant measures such as Haar measure. I will note that most students take Introduction to Quantum Information Processing or an equivalent course either at the undergraduate or graduate level before taking Theory of Quantum Information so this course is effectively at the third level of the prerequisite chain in terms of quantum information and computation theory courses. If you've never taken a course on quantum information and computation before, this is definitely not the course you want to start with. Instead, consider taking Introduction to Quantum Information Processing, which is offered every fall term at the graduate level and every winter term at the undergraduate level at the University of Waterloo. Theory of quantum information is typically offered every odd-numbered fall term in case you're interested in that course. The topics that I'm planning to cover in this course include the following. First, I'll discuss generalized entropy measures, including max relative entropy and the entropic quantities it induces, such as conditional min entropy, along with smooth variance of these quantities. Also, we'll discuss the hypothesis testing relative entropy, and we'll relate these quantities to the ordinary quantum relative entropy and von Neumann entropy. I will also discuss various applications of semi-definite programming and of conic programming more generally to quantum information theory. This includes Searleson's theorem and its implications, the so-called NPA hierarchy of semi-definite programs for commuting operator correlations, and different ways to analyze multi-round interactions, such as through the quantum strategies formalism, which is also commonly called the quantum Combs formalism. Another topic to be discussed is the application of unitarily invariant measures in quantum information theory, and in particular, we'll go through Hastings' refutation of the additivity conjecture. Depending on how things go with these topics, there could be more, but I'll have to wait and see how many lectures the topics just described will require and how many lectures I can actually manage to prepare. Now, with respect to the logistics of the course, let me say a few things. First, obviously, this is going to be an online course. The lectures will be asynchronous. I'll make videos just like this one and make them available online through the course webpage. Now, I've never created or run an online course before, so this is an entirely new experience for me. And I do hope that you will excuse me for all of the deficiencies that you will certainly find in the videos. I do hope that the quality of these videos will improve as the term progresses. I certainly welcome your feedback on the lectures. Your comments and criticisms will certainly be helpful to me as I attempt to improve my skill at making these sorts of videos. Please note that the lectures are considerably shorter than the standard one hour, 20 minute lectures to which you may be accustomed. So far, the lectures are coming in at about half that length. In fact, the lectures do contain the same amount of material that I would normally prepare for a one hour and 20 minute lecture. It's just that the lectures are condensed because I'm not pausing to write on the board or to answer student questions, for example. I will also set up an optional question and answer session through some sort of remote conferencing system like Zoom or WebEx so that people have a chance to ask questions, hear other students' questions, and hopefully get some useful answers. I'm also happy to meet privately, remotely, of course, with students that request that. 
It should be made clear that students will not be asked or required to have a camera or to activate their camera if they do have one at any point in this course. I respect your privacy, and it is up to you whether or not you wish to use a camera during any of the remote conferencing activities associated with this course. If you are registered in the course, your grade will be determined 100% by your performance on assigned problem sets. Just like for CS766 or QIC820, you are free to work together on the problem sets if you choose to do that. If you don't know anybody in the course, then perhaps through the question and answer sessions, you will get to know other people in the course and form productive working relationships. Of course, assignment submissions must clearly acknowledge any collaborations with classmates, and you must prepare your own write-ups entirely on your own. You can expect some challenging problems, and if I can come up with some reasonable open problems, they might potentially have some bonus values towards grading. However, it is my intention for this course to have a significantly lighter workload than for CS766 or QIC820. The objective here is to learn some interesting new material, not to be devoting a major part of your time to working on these problem sets. So please do not allow a fear of a large workload to get in the way of your registering for the course. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out the webpage for course announcements and assignments, as well as some further details on the course. And don't hesitate to let me know if you do have any questions. My contact details can be found on the course webpage.